In this video, we're going to take a look at completing the square. Now, in this video, like we've seen in some of the previous ones, this is more of a recap and revision of material that you covered in GCSE Math, so there shouldn't really be anything too challenging in here. But we have picked some slightly trickier examples um, compared to what you might have seen at GCSE Maths. Now, there's two examples on this page that we'll work through together, and then on the next page, there's two practice questions for you to have a go at. So let's start with this first example here. And what we're asked to do here is show that this quadratic is strictly greater than zero for all values of x. So how would we do this here? And how does this kind of relate to completing the square? Well, let's just think about the problem first. So if this quadratic here is greater than zero, then what we're saying is that it doesn't cross, it doesn't intersect the x-axis, okay? Now, if we just sketch this, just to kind of see what's going on, we're gonna have something that looks like this. So this is my x-axis here. This is my y-axis. And this is a positive quadratic because the coefficient of x squared here is, um, well, positive. So in that case, it's going to look something, say, like this. Okay. So like we can see, it doesn't cross the x-axis. It's always above the x-axis. So how does this relate to completing the square? Well, if we think about this quadratic here, with this being a positive quadratic, we have a minimum point, say, here. And it should seem obvious, but if our minimum point is above the x-axis, then the full quadratic is also above the x-axis. So in that case, if we take a look at this quadratic here, if we can complete the square, well, one of the useful properties of completing the square is that we can work out the minimum point. So in that case, if we complete the square, work out the minimum point in, in this case, then we can see hopefully that it's above the x-axis. So let's complete the square on this quadratic here. So this is going to be x. We have this coefficient here of x. So it's going to be x minus 2. We square this bracket. And I subtract this value squared. So minus 2 squared would be 4. So we subtract 4. And then don't forget the plus 8 here. Now what I want to do here is clean this up. So we get x minus 2 all squared. Minus 4 plus 8 would give me positive 4 there. Okay. So we've got this in completed square form now. So once we've got it in completed square form, we can see the minimum turning point. So the minimum point here, we just write this down. So the minimum point is given by our completed square form. This, if we times it by minus one, gives us our x coordinate. So just take the opposite sign here. So this is minus two. The x coordinate is positive two. And then the y one is just given by this constant here at the end, so 4 in this case. So our minimum point is 2, 4, and it kind of matches with this diagram here. So let's say this is 2, 4. Then clearly in this case, because the y one here is um, greater than 0, so it's above the x-axis, in that case, the full quadratic is strictly greater than 0 for our values of x. So therefore... What we're saying here is x squared uh, minus 4x plus 8 is strictly greater than 0 for all values of x. Just note that down here. And there we have it. So that's our solution to the first example. Now, the second one here, so x press 3x squared plus 12x plus 5, in this form here is a little bit trickier. And the reason why is because the coefficient of x squared here isn't 1. Now, remember, to complete the square, we need that coefficient to be 1. So we need to do a little bit of work here. And the work we need to do is to factor this 3 out, this coefficient. So let's factor the 3 out first. So 3 lots. And we do, the, we do this for the full quadratic. So we're going to get x squared. So 12x, that would be plus 4x. And then plus 5 here, so that would be plus 5 over 3. Okay. So once we've got it like this, where we factored the coefficient out, if it's not 1, then we can complete the square now on this quadratic because the coefficient of x squared is 1 in this case. So we leave the 3 on the outside. Complete the square now on this quadratic here. So that's going to be x. So we have this value again. So that's going to be plus 2. We square this bracket. And now we subtract this value squared. So that's minus 4. And we still got the plus 5 over 3 here. Okay. 
So again, what I want to do now is clean this up. So we leave the three on the outside again. So we've got the x plus 2 still, all squared. Minus 4 plus 5 over 3. So clearly you could just put this into your calculator. If we didn't have a calculator, then I'd need to write this 4 um, with a denominator of 3. So minus 4, that's the same as minus 12 over 3. Just write that there so I can see. So that's minus 12 over 3 plus 5 over 3. And again, just keep cleaning this up as we go. You get three lots of x plus 2 all squared. So minus 12 over 3 plus 5 over 3, that would give me minus 7 over 3. Okay. Now we want it in this form here. So it's a lots of x plus b all squared plus c. So at this point here, we're not quite in the correct form. But if we multiply through now by this coefficient that we took out before, this 3 on the outside, then we're going to get the a lots of x plus b. And then obviously this plus c here will just be 3 times this. So in that case, we get 3 lots of x plus 2 all squared. Like so. And then 3 times minus 7 over 3. That would give me minus 21 over 3, giving me minus 7 there. Okay. And there we have it. We've got it in the correct form here. So that's our solution. And obviously we can just note the values of a, b, and c then. We don't have to. We're not asked to denote them. But a would be 3. B would be this term here, so that's 2. And C is my minus 7. And there we have it. So that's our solution to the second example. So now it's your turn to have a go. So pause the video now, have a quick go at these two practice questions, and then we'll take a look in a moment at what you should have got. So hopefully you got on OK with these two practice questions. Let's take a look now at what you should have got. So again, they follow the same pattern, these two questions here. So the first one is a show that, again, we've just got this quadratic here, and um, this quadratic, I can't speak, and it's strictly greater than zero. So again, we just need to complete the square and show that the minimum point is above the x-axis. So complete the square on this, so we get x minus 3. We square this bracket, and we subtract this value squared. So that's going to be minus 9, and then we've got the plus 10 here. So Clean this up here, we get x uh, minus 3 all squared. Minus 9 plus 10, that would give me positive 1. So in this case, we can then write the minimum point. So the minimum point here, just write this down in full. That will be equal to, so times this by minus 1, I'll just take the opposite sign. So that would be positive 3 for the x coordinate, and my y coordinate will be 1 there. Okay. So again, the y coordinate now is, you know, it's above the x axis, it's greater than zero. So therefore, so therefore, um, the quadratic that we're working with, so x squared minus 6x plus 10 is greater than zero, or strictly greater than zero. Okay, and that's for all values of x. So that's our solution. That's what we should have got for, um, or that's how we should have shown the solution to the first question. And for this one here, again, we're just asked to express 2x squared plus 6x plus 3 in this form here. So again, it's slightly more difficult because the coefficient of x squared here is not 1. So we need to factor this coefficient out. So we take 2 out here. We factor that 2 out. So I'm going to get x squared. 6x here, so that would be plus 3x. And then we've got this plus 3 here, so that would be plus 3 over 2. Okay. Now we've got it with a coefficient of x squared being 1. So we can now complete the square on this quadratic here inside the square bracket. So keep the 2 on the outside. So that's going to be x. So this one, again, it's a little bit more complicated as well because when I have this value now, this will be a fraction. So it's going to be x plus 3 over 2. We square this bracket, and then we subtract this value squared. So 3 over 2 squared would be um, 9 over 4, but we subtract this off. So minus 9 over 4, and don't forget the plus 3 over 2 here. Okay. So again, this is just a matter now of cleaning it up as we go here. So we've got two lots of this bracket here, x plus 3 over 2, all squared. 
So I've got minus 9 over 4 plus 302. So obviously I need to make this fraction here have a denominator of 4. So that would be plus 6 over 4. So minus 9 over 4 plus 6 over 4. That would give me minus 3 over 4. Okay. So minus 3 over 4 there. And again now at this point here we want it in this form. So I just need to times through now by this 2 on the outside. So in that case we get two lots of x plus 3 over 2 all squared. Two lots of x plus 3 over 2 all squared. <clears throat> Forgive me, I'm losing my voice here. And um, then we times 2 by minus 3 over 4. So we times 2 and minus 3 over 4 together, then we get minus 6 over 4, which would give me minus 6 over 4, which would give us minus 3 over 2. So two lots of x plus. 3 over 2 all squared and minus 3 over 2 there. Okay. And that is our solution there. So you could know the values of A, B, and C if you wanted. So A would be 2, B would be 3 over 2, and then C in this case would be minus 3 over 2. And there we have it. So that's our solution. And that actually brings us to the end of this video. In the next video, we're going to take a look at introducing the discriminant.